average value of a function. If we want to calculate the average value of a certain amount of numbers that we know, that's easy. We just add them all up and divide by the number that we're adding up. That's how we find an average. Our question in this section is going to be, how do we compute the average if we don't know how many numbers we're adding up? For example, how do we find the average temperature in a day if infinitely many temperature readings are possible? We're going to try to compute the average value of a function y equals f of x on some interval from a to b. In order to do this, we're going to go ahead and just break it into equal subintervals with each width, delta x, being b minus a over n. So that's our, just our normal delta x. So then the average value becomes, let's add up all the values and divide by b minus a over delta x, which is just the number of subintervals, right? Because what is this? This is saying, well, delta x equals b minus a over n, so n delta x equals b minus a. The number of subintervals that we're making is just b minus a over delta x. And so you'll see that this is the same as this. And so now we just want to reduce this. Um, basically, you have a division problem, so we'll multiply by the reciprocal, and we'll get delta x times the numerator all over b minus a. We just factored the b minus a out, and we get f of x sub 1 star times delta x plus add them all up. And what do you notice here? Well, we're just summing up all of the height times the width. And that is just our summation that we've seen a lot of times. In other words, the area under our curve. So we can say that the average value of a function on the interval a to b is just 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And so this is our average value of a function. Let's just go ahead and find the average value of the function 1 plus x squared on the interval negative 1 to 2. Our average value is just 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. We get 1 over 2 plus 1 is 3. And then we'll take the antiderivative. And we get x plus one-third x cubed. And so that is one-third. Sticking a two everywhere. And then stick it a negative one. And so we're left with one-third times uh, fourteen-thirds plus four-thirds. In other words, one-third times eighteen-thirds, which would be just two. So that is the average value of our function. We would expect there to be a time of day at which the temperature is the same as the average temperature for the day. Doesn't this ring a bell? Doesn't this sound like something we've talked about before? In general, is there a number C at which the value of a function f is exactly equal to the average value of the function? The mean value theorem for integrals says that for continuous functions, the answer is yes. So we have a mean value theorem for integrals. Remember, the mean value theorem that we were talking about before said that the average value had to be equal to the slope f prime somewhere. And so now we're just saying that the average value of the function is equal to the actual function at some point. Here's a graphical interpretation of it. So here's the mean value theorem. Vernigal is saying there is some f of c that equals 
the average value of the function. And if we just do some multiplication, then multiply both sides by b minus a, then we get the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals f of c times b minus a. So I just multiplied both sides by b minus a. The graphical interpretation is saying, well, there must be some f of c such that f of c times b minus a is just the rectangle, the area of that rectangle, right? Can you see that? The height is f of c and the width is b minus a. So the area of this rectangle is equal to the area under the curve. That's all it's saying. Since f of x equals 1 plus x squared is continuous, in order to use the mean value theorem or the mean value theorem for integrals, we must show that the function is continuous before we can even do anything. So since f of x equals 1 plus x squared is continuous on the interval from negative 1 to 2, mean value theorem for integrals says that what? It says that f of c equals f average, the average value. Well, we found in example 1 that f average equals 2. So f of c, which is just 1 plus c squared, must be equal to f average, which is 2, at some c. So we get c squared equals 1, c equals plus or minus 1. And now remember, just like we did in our other examples with the mean value theorem, we need to make sure that we're on the interval, and both are. So our answer is plus or minus 1. Both are in the interval. Check. So here's a graphical interpretation, and you'll see when the height is negative 1 or 1, then the area under the curve is equal to the area of this rectangle. So that's what it's saying. When c equals negative 1 or when c equals 1, well then at that height, and you'll see that the rectangle is at that height, then the blue shaded region and the area of that rectangle are equal. In example 3, we want to show that the average velocity of a car over a time interval, t1 to t2, is the same as the average of its velocities during the trip. Now here is where a lot of people get confused. Don't confuse average velocity with average value. Don't forget, average velocity is just reverting to our Algebra 2 brain. And so the average velocity, well, when at T1, we're at position 1, and at T2, we're at some position 2. And so the average velocity is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's average velocity, and we want to show that it's the same as the average of its velocities. So the average value of the function is going to be 1 over b minus a, integral from t1 to t2 of the velocity. And so when we do that, the antiderivative of velocity is just position. And so we evaluate that. And so we get the same thing in this case. And so that is it for this section.